Hi, everyone. Hi, Adam. Hi, Isabel. How are you? Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Aussie's Group Every Wednesday live section with one of our provider. So today we have Adam uh, with me today from TAFE International WA. So hi, Adam. Thank you for joining us today for the live sections. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Would you all like to introduce yourself today? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm I'm Adam Quigley from Tate International Western Australia, and from now on, because it's such a long name, it'll just I'll just shorten that to Tiwa. Tiwa is much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Adam from Tiwa. Yeah. Um, but no, happy to go through and uh, and talk to the viewers a little bit about Perth, about what Tiwa offers, and uh, some of the the differences, I suppose, that make us a um, a, a good choice if people are considering studying in Western Australia. Yep, great. So um, just to let you guys know that um, at the end of the section, we will be having a QA and a um, question and answer. So please put down any question in the chat box. Then if you have any, Adam will reply at the end of your presentations. Adam, do you want to share your um, PPT now? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's get into it. Give me just a couple of moments. Yep. Okay, just give me a thumbs up if that one has come through, Isabel. Can you see it? Right. Fantastic. It sounds like we're all here. So we've, we've already right, done a quick I'll introduction. Leave it to you. I'll oh. note myself now. I'll leave it to you. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, already on the quick introduction, but um, I'm Adam from Tiwa, and my typical role here at Tiwa is assisting with our uh, onshore agency network. So Aussies Group Australia are a, a long-term partner of ours at Tiwa, and um, we absolutely love working with Aussies. Um, for helping students get into the right sorts of uh, sorts of courses here in WA. Quickly, a quick bit of background for TAFE. TAFE stands for Technical and Further Education. So we're a vocational training provider, not a university. And I'll go, go through some of the detail about that in an upcoming slide. So what I like to put here is just a few slides about Perth, because for some people who are considering studying in Australia, the thought is that Australia study means Sydney, it means Melbourne. And while Sydney and Melbourne are wonderful places, and I spend uh, some time living in Melbourne myself and friends in Sydney, um, Perth absolutely is, is, is worth considering. There's more to Australia than just Sydney and Melbourne. So in Perth, we've got nearly 2.6 million people and about 3 million in the state. The state of WA is essentially cutting across here with Perth position where this yellow marker is. Uh, at the most recent count, it was the 12th most livable city in the world, tied with Adelaide and um, just, a, just a few behind Sydney and Melbourne, in fact. And it's uh, placed in the world's best time zone, which means the time zone we're in here in Western Australia and Perth shares a very favorable time zone with uh, almost two thirds of the world's population, meaning that if students are here, it's very easy to stay in contact with friends and family back home without having to worry about difficult, uh, wake up in the middle of the night, for example, or, or um, scheduling alarms just to, just, just to allow a phone call or Skype message back home. At last count, we have nearly 60,000 international students in WA. And one factor which I love is that almost four out of 10 people in Perth were born overseas. That includes myself. I was born in Toronto, Canada. But really, we've got a state here in WA which is uh, multicultural to its core, which is why international students are increasingly choosing West Western Australia as their place for study. Uh, also of note is WA has the strongest state economy in all of Australia by quite a margin. Why is that important? Well, a strong economy means extra opportunities and growth, which is fantastic for uh, international students looking to work throughout their studies here or potentially pursue ongoing employment opportunities following their study. And finally, Perth is the only major city in Australia that has a Mediterranean climate. So a Mediterranean climate is typically one that is um, that people tend to tend to enjoy. It's categorized by dry summers and sort of cooler winters, but overall pleasant throughout. 
there are hot days, there are rainy days. It's not this uh, this perfect spot overall, but on the whole, you've got uh, more days of sunshine than pretty much anywhere else in Australia, I'd say. Now, we can't talk about Perth or Australia without really touching on the cost of living side of things. And Perth, on the whole, has similar challenges, the same challenges that other capital cities throughout Australia have as well. We do have some, uh, some challenges with vacancy rates and with, uh, with the rentals. In terms of sheer comparison, though, with other capital cities, um, on the whole, the rents in Perth, say for a one-bedroom apartment, are typically lower than the rest of Australia's average. Same for rent for a three-bedroom apartment, typically lower outside city centre, lower still. Also worth noting is these four points here. So for cost of living generally, um, consumer prices in Perth are almost a couple of percent lower than the Australian average. Grocery prices, restaurant prices, and rent prices typically lower. Um, so that's something to consider with Sydney and Melbourne. Um, as great as those places are, they are they are big cities. They're big. They're uh, they're quite crowded. They can be expensive, and that's why thinking of Perth or Western Australia, um, the economic factor should certainly uh, come into that decision. A few beautiful images to help sell Western Australia. Uh, in the top left, we have the treetop walk, which is. Um, uh, an activity which students can certainly get to and you're walking on these big suspended uh, platforms across the uh, these tingle trees in the southwest which is uh, just phenomenal and a little bit a little bit scary for those of a fear of heights to the right we have rotnest island which is a short ferry ride uh, from the perth city center and the island's pretty much surrounded in coasts uh, coastlines like that and beautiful beaches that are about that crowded as well it also hosts the um the famous quokka, the smiling little quokka that you see um, in a lot of presentations from WA education providers, uh, and certainly the source of a lot of selfies from celebrities who visit. Bottom left, we've got the Blue Boathouse, which is a popular hashtag at Instagram. It looks like something generated from artificial intelligence, but it's a, it's a real place that you can go to, and um, you often find on the weekends people are lined up for selfies or wedding shots or just uh, just fantastic photos for their own um, own social media there. And there's also places like the uh, Karajini National Park where you've got uh, the opportunity to, to swim in beautiful rock pools and, and, and natural formations. I suppose what I'm trying to say is outside of uh, outside of Perth itself, there's countless, countless adventures to be had, but these are just a small selection of some of the things that can be available. Perth itself. Uh, top left, Elizabeth Key. This is a shot showing Elizabeth Key, the entrance to Perth City. And you can see um, that we're a modern, up-to-date, fantastic, uh, fantastic place to live. Not too, not too small, not too big, with all the amenities you'd expect from a modern city. Uh, this shot here is a shot of Australia's best stadium, Optus Stadium. Uh, it's been voted that, I believe, three times in a row and has recently hosted the pop star Pink. So uh, as long, along, along with WWE wrestling and Coldplay and Ed Sheeran, um, we've got a lot of fantastic performers coming to give entertainment to people here. We also have a Fringe Festival happening in January every year here in Perth. It's the third largest Fringe Festival in the world behind Edinburgh and Adelaide. What Fringe Festival is, is a arts, uh, arts festival which hosts music, comedy, um, theatre, performance. But the difference is that tickets for it are on the whole quite, uh, quite cheap. You know, you can get a ticket for an event for maybe $10, $10 $15 and go out and see it. And the entire city has a bit of a celebratory festive atmosphere, which is fantastic. Um, so certainly affordable for, for students who are looking to, to get out and enjoy, um, enjoy some nightlife during those months of fringes on. And of course, there is just so much more. That's a shot down at, uh, a photo down at City Beach, uh, Scar Beach, sorry, Scar Beach there. Um, plenty of things to see and do for people, especially if they're looking for the outdoors. Now, because we're a government institution and unlike a, a, 
a private RTO, we're a public RTO, which means we have many, many different campuses. And I'll, I'll cover that, but I can't simply show one single campus and the location and the facilities because we have such a large footprint in Western Australia. So that I quickly played this one video here to give a quick snapshot of some of the things we offer and then go into it in a bit more detail. Sure, Adam. So you can imagine if I talked through all of that, I'd be here for hours, I suspect, going through the different different courses and opportunities yeah. available. Too many courses and too many campus. Oh, so many campuses. Um, but that's, I suppose just for a couple of minutes, you know, if they say a picture's worth a thousand words, then that was uh, that was the easiest way to convey some of the, the scale of, of what we're talking about for a uh, Taker International Western Australian. Yeah. So this shot here covers off the campus locations we have. So I mentioned that we're a public RTO, uh, government owned and operated. And one of the key differences here from a private RTO is that private RTOs typically have maybe one, two campuses where we have uh, 20 plus, 20, I believe 21 and counting that service international students. Um, and TAFE International is the uh, application and enrollment side of things for international students. What happens there is the training is delivered by different TAFEs throughout Perth and Western Australia here. So international students come through us and then once they're approved and receive an offer and accepted, the training is then delivered by North Metropolitan TAFE, South Metropolitan TAFE or our regional TAFE colleges. This large square here shows the Perth metropolitan area. Now you can't really see it, but just there is the, um, the international and domestic airport. The items in red are campuses for North Metropolitan TAFE. And you can see these dotted lines here show, um, show train lines. So most are positioned along easy public, uh, public transport access with many others also down for South Metropolitan TAFE also along major train lines. This smaller inlaid square is the whole state of Western Australia. And that covers uh, more of our regional campus locations that are not as popular as the metropolitan locations, but certainly, certainly growing for international students. That includes Broome Campus in the north, which is a wonderful holiday destination for, for Western Australia. Uh, our central 
central regional TAFE locations at Geraldton, Kalgoorlie and Northern, along with South Regional in Bunbury and Albany. And you can see this smaller square here, metropolitan area, that relates to this larger square. That makes sense. So you can see the, the scale of how many campuses we're, we're dealing with, which means depending on what a student's looking for, chances are there's a campus that's either near to where they're staying in Perth, Western Australia, or uh, in an area which, uh, which is where they're looking to, look to explore, whether that's the, the cooler parts around South Regional or maybe the warmer tropical parts in Broome. So I did mention this before, government owned and operated. Um, it's worth, worth reinforcing that point. Um, the reason is that TAFE in Western Australia has been providing vocational training, that's practical hands-on training for over 100 years and over 20 years for international students. What this government backing means for students is that reliability, security and quality are, are all built in. Um, we've got a strong reputation here in the state of Western Australia. And that's something where um, with that history and that reputation means that TAFE is, is highly considered by employers who are uh, evaluating applicants after they've completed their studies uh, with us. The next unique selling point to be aware of is affordability and value. So compared to, um, compared to some, well, compared to university, our courses are shorter duration. So you're looking at maybe a two year package with, uh, with TIWA, where a university package might be three years plus. Compared to university, we have lower tuition costs and lower entry requirements. So students looking to do their two years with us uh, can be out uh, and potentially working in a much shorter time than students who are going through the university route. Courses are nationally recognized. So students uh, who do study here in Perth, Western Australia uh, could absolutely take that qualification um, to other parts of Australia and still be considered uh, qualified in whatever, they're, uh, whatever they've studied. But for those students who do wish to continue on to university following their studies, we do have university pathways available um, with all the logos there, ECU, Curtin and Murdoch, and most recently at Notre Dame University. I know uh, Thomas from Notre Dame was previously, uh, very recently on one of these Aussies live. Yeah, it was last week. Last, last week. week. No, I'm very <laughs> good. If we hit along well with Thomas. Um, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the recent uh, pathways we have with Notre Dame University is for nursing. So students oh. can complete 18 months with us uh, at TIWA for enrolled nursing mm -hmm. and then continue on to Notre Dame to become a registered nurse. And gain... well, second year, is it, for one year? That's time. right. They gain, they gain uh, 12 months of credit for that particular okay. pathway. That's... Nice. So that is, that is uh, almost brand new, uh, that one. So certainly uh, one which we're looking to promote uh, throughout this year. Yeah. But I suppose the... Um, yeah, the takeaway from this, this slide is for, for TWA students, they can absolutely study here in Perth for lower costs, but they have the option and opportunity to expand and, and go to um, higher education, should that be something they're interested in. Yeah, however, if they study one year course, they still can get credited into their bachelor for one year. Yes, that's right. There is, uh, there is credit. So I suppose there's two ways of looking at it. There's packaged pathways if students wish to package up their university with their TIWA course, yeah. uh, or there's diploma entry. So students completing a diploma at TAFE then can, uh, can potentially reapply for a different course at university and get their qualifications assessed at that university. Thank you, Aidan. Uh, selling point three is practical hands-on training. So where university is one where you're, um, you're typically learning in a classroom environment. You're, you're sitting there with your books, you're having a lecturer uh, talk at you, you're taking notes and you're assessed on your knowledge through exams and, um, and tests. TAFE and vocational training on the whole is one where you're really learning by doing. It's practical, hands-on training um, and all the benefits that come from that where you're, where you're learning through, through actually doing the activities and, and, and experiencing the tasks that would uh, would follow you into the into the workplace following your qualification. Yeah, especially small classes size, like less 
less students, you know, the lecturer can interact with the, um, the student. Absolutely. Small class size. And I, I don't know if it listed here, but um, it's worth noting that at Tiwa, international students and domestic students are all in the same classroom. We don't have separate standalone international colleges where students who are uh, international students are there just with other international students. No, nope. students are all, mi all mixed together. So there's a chance to uh, learn from Australian students and make new friendships. Yeah, it's good as and well because versa. they actually can learn Australia culture as well as an international student. Exchange culture, it was a great idea. I, I think it's fantastic. And it yeah. goes both ways. Uh, I think um, you know, domestic students can 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 learn about uh, different different cultures and experiences and make new friends as well from international true. students who are arriving. True. Yeah. Um, oh, also, yeah, we have many of these courses with built-in internships, sort of, uh, and work placements. So a student, as part of their qualification, might spend dozens to hundreds of hours out out in actual work environment, a workplace with an employer. Um, dealing with the public and, and really get that, um, that practical skill set to go with what they're learning at Tiwa. Um, and many classes that don't have that also have simulated work environments. So an example for that would be uh, one of our simulated work restaurants. So that's a active live restaurant that we have. We have a, a, a few of these, in fact, where members of the public can come in to the TAFE, uh, TAFE campus and they'll be served by front of house staff that are students in the process of completing their qualification. There'll be cooked food that's, um, that's been prepared by students in the commercial cookery uh, qualifications and the entire operation is all organized um, and managed by students. So they're very popular and it's an excellent chance for students to get that live restaurant experience um, in a contained environment under the watchful eye of one of their, uh, one of their lecturers. Beautiful. Nice. Just on the topic of the lecturers as well, um, we, we hire from industry. So I've got here that lecturers are experts in their field with the contacts and knowledge and skills industry need. What that really means is we hire people who, are, who have spent a lot of time in their various industries, which means they know them back to front. They know the skills that, uh, that employers are looking for and they help give students that information, that training, and also the contacts that can help them um, throughout their throughout their studies and, and, and after their studies. And that can help with work, work placements too. Now I mentioned we have a lot of campuses and yeah, I think the video showed 20 campuses. We've got an extra one now, 21. I've got the plus sign there because it feels like it's uh, it's always growing. You're adding campuses. more campuses. Always, always more campuses. Always, always yeah. more courses and more campuses. I know, I know, yeah. Um, which is a cha it's, it, it's challenging for me. Uh, a, private, a private RTO might specialise in, in one or two where we specialise in, in so many and have dedicated training facilities for so many that I have to be quite broad in what I talk about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, they're located all throughout Perth, the state of Western Australia. And that list there on the right, which you're seeing, showing you know, accounting, business and management, animal care, et cetera, um, they're not courses, they're course categories. So we have uh, multiple courses sitting under each of those. Mm -hmm. in, in bold, uh, some of the popular ones that we, uh, we certainly see a lot of interest for for international students, uh, range from animal care, um, of course, automotive, people learning how to work on. on yeah. Yeah. Uh, engineering, that has a, a good cohort of students who many of whom continue on to university. Mm -hmm. Um, construction, we have um, carpentry, um, that's a very popular one, Certificate 3 in Carpentry, which is two years, and uh, yeah, certainly certainly fills up, fills up with, uh, with a lot of interest, uh, every, every, uh, every intake we have for that one. But then other classics like information technology, um, which is always, always growing and evolving, we have many specialties in that, ranging from front-end web development, programming, networking, um, back-end web development, all different streams depending on the student's interest in IT, uh, along with the usual classics of early childhood education, community services, hospitality, cookery, and nursing. So ones that are um, all pretty much listed on that skills shortage list and all have, um, have a lot of interest from international students and delivered at multiple campuses. Yeah. Um, through... 
just because we have so many different courses and so many campuses, we can't deliver absolutely every, we don't deliver a hundred courses at every single one of our campuses. It's all spread out and different campuses we have have different specialities as well. And also please remind that, that that's two intake, February and July. So next available intake will be July intake. That's absolutely correct, Isabel. Yes. Thank you. Now, in terms of scholarships and bursaries, so the first one to talk about is our Destination Australia um, Round 5 Scholarship. Um, so that's currently, um, currently receiving applications for students who are looking to study. Both of these are for our regional, regional colleges. Um, this is for students who are particularly interested in nursing or early childhood education and care. And eligible, eligible students get paid $7,500 per semester, assuming they're studying one of the eligible courses at one of the um, campuses with a semester two intake in July. Yeah. So I've got the bit.ly link there if, um, if any Thinking viewers are. Are we talking about Bunbury? Uh, uh, so we've got Albany, we've got Bunbury and the central, central regional. So um, Northern, Kalgoorlie and Geraldton. Thank you. So if you think for a two-year course, um, let's say uh, the early child education care package is two years, that'd be mm -hmm. four payments of $7,500. This, these amounts, uh, sorry? That's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have limited numbers of these scholarships. Student. Sorry? We do have limited numbers of these scholarships. It's not a case of every, every student gets one of these scholarships, but we're... Oh, Okay. Would you share a little bit more about this? Then? Yeah, yeah. We, so we have, um, uh, I believe we have 12 of these scholarships available for semester two. Mm -hmm. um, the application process is all outlined on that, on that link there. Um, mm -hmm. But really what it comes down to is applying for an eligible course at an eligible location and then filling out a, a, a small application form, which is essentially three questions outlining your reasons for study, your intent following your study and your accommodation plans or research for the area. So it's a it's a very quick process to apply. Um, and th those those applications will be assessed uh, in the coming months as we I suppose in the next two in the next two months that'll mm -hmm. be assessed and, uh, and evaluated and students will be notified if they're successful mm -hmm. or unsuccessful. But yeah, for a two-year package, we're talking four payments of seven and a half thousand dollars. So it's a uh, it's fantastic, and that's not yeah, a discount yeah. on fees. It's a it's a transfer into your bank account to use how you will. The second scholarship bursary is the regional bursary. So that's a one off five thousand dollar payment to students studying an eligible course, uh, an el eligible course package in a regional location. So that also includes. Um, Broom, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so the course, the available courses that are, are on the regional bursary, there's more variety to those. And there mm -hmm. is only the one-off Australian $5,000 payment. Um, but what is worth noting for students who are interested in Destination Australia, uh, before I get on that, the regional bursary is delivered to all students. So if they simply apply for an eligible course, they get this $5,000 payment automatically it doesn't need to go through assessment or anything there's no like assessment that. for the regional bursary as long as it's an eligible course an eligible campus, they get that five thousand dollar payment um a few weeks after they start their uh, their intake semester mm -hmm. now the very important thing to note if students are interested in destination australia scholarship yeah these stack so a student would get if they were successful in getting the Destination Australia Round 5 scholarship, they would get the payments of $7,500 per semester, mm -hmm. but they would also get the $5,000 payment for the regional bursary. So that means oh. a two-year package will get a student uh, $35,000 Australian. When they combine the two of these. So certainly... I'd advise students if they're if they're interested to to look through those links and have a bit of a um, bit of a check a bit of a read to see if um, to see the location and the courses are um, 
are of interest, but there's absolutely some opportunity there if a student is looking to potentially study in a regional location, see a different side of Australia um, and Western Australia that many students don't see. And then of course, if they're studying in a regional location, um, there are uh, added benefits as well um, in terms of cost of living, in terms of opportunities, in terms of uh, down the track, um, very likely improvements and, and, and point benefits to, to future visas that um, could certainly help with long-term plans. Thanks. I'll only cover this very quickly, um, but we do, of course, offer English packaging for students. If, um, if a student does require additional English before they begin their course to meet their course requirements, um, and most of our courses have an um, have a English requirement of IELTS 5.5, no band below five. Mm -hmm. The two courses that do not are early childhood education and care, which is an IELTS six, and diploma of nursing, which is an IELTS seven. If English packaging is required, those are the basic steps that allow a student to, uh, to package up a um, package up English tuition along with their course at TAFE. Mm -hmm. If they package up with one of the providers listed there below in the blue, then there's a $500 packaging deposit fee that they pay to receive a TAFE COE to get their student visa. So it is a smaller amount in order to receive the COE, which can be helpful for students um, when they're um, initially, initially applying and looking to get that COE to apply for their student visa. So lots of opportunities there with different valued providers, all of which have a long history of delivering exceptional English training in, uh, in Perth and around. And it goes without saying that student support comes standard. So we have trained support coordinators and a dedicated inter international office at each of our TAFE colleges that we, um, that we have students, um, students going to in Western Australia. There's also study Perth which student, international students uh, can access as a service to help allow international students here in Perth to have activities and a network and be supported and, uh, and use the student hub positioned right there in the city to, to meet other international students and potentially go on activities and, and uh, different, um, different trips around, around Perth. For students at TAFE, we have jobs and skills centers that allow career guidance and directions of students are looking for, um, for work throughout their studies, then that can be sourced and, and they can have assistance building their resume or CV in order to help, uh, help find a role to help support them during their studies. And of course, there's support, counseling, intervention is needed. We want international students to succeed at TAFE. Um, so, if students are struggling for any reason, then we have the support net in place to ensure that they get all the help they need to have a successful time studying here. Now, I know time is getting away from us a little bit, but I thought I'd quickly put on this uh, testimonial from one of, our, um, one of our students. Kaloha, do you mind if I put that on? Yep, sure, Adam. All right. My name is Kelo Havakasilimi. I am from Fiji. I'm studying community services at South Metropolitan TAFE Murdoch campus. The reason I chose to study in Perth is because I was an international student when I was in high school and I just loved Perth. I loved Western Australia. I found out studying at TAFE through a friend. Um, which had mutual friends with an education agent. They recommended studying in Medoc campus and community services was what I wanted to do because I wanted to help people that was not able to help themselves. So with this qualification in community services, I'd love to do social work. And because of this course, I'm now a support worker. The facilities here are amazing. The lectures are very supportive. Everyone.
Sorry, everyone. I think there's a technical issues. And Adam lines have dropped it, and um, so sorry about that. But anyhow, it's almost the end of the live session. If you have any questions, please contact us at the chat box below. We will contact you. Thank you for watching. Oh, he's back. I am back. Apologies. My, my computer <laughs> like, froze in the, in the middle of that doing? testimonial, which was which was lovely. But uh... yeah, I was about to end the section. But anyhow, thanks, Adam, for sharing all the information on Tiva. Um, uh, let me see if there's that, that was the end of the presentation. He was just thanking everyone for yes. their attention and time. So it worked <laughs> yeah, out well. It was gonna freeze. Time. I know. So um, thank you guys. Thank you for watching and thank you, Adam, for joining us today. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Um, we will be contacted shortly. Thank you, Adam. Do you have any more? Nothing, from, nothing from me. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone watching and for your for your time. I really appreciate it. And thanks, uh, thanks Isabel, for, for setting this up. It was great to be able to talk about tea with everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. See you soon.